We all know the story of the three wise men who came out of the East to present their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the newborn king. Have you ever heard of a fourth wise man who also followed the star of Bethlehem? Well, there's a legend that there was another magi who set out to offer tribute to the infant Jesus. This is the story of that man. In the days when Herod carried out Rome's orders in Jerusalem, there lived far to the east in the Persian city of Ectabana, a certain nobleman named Artaban. He was one of the Magi, the ruling priests of Persia. He had called a meeting at his home to consider a matter of great importance. So I've sold all of my possessions. Bought these three jewels, sapphire, a ruby, and a pearl, to carry them as tribute to our king. I'm ready to start the journey, and I want you to go with me. Sold all your possessions. Out of it, have you taken leave of your senses? A great king is worthy of great tribute to Grannis, and the one we seek is the mightiest of them all. So you inform us, but by what authority, by what scroll or tablet? The prophecy of Balaam. Surely as a magi, you know that. Naturally, I know the prophecy. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall appear in Israel. Noble words, but what do they mean? Since you have no faith in Balaam, what about the words of the prophet Daniel? From the going forth of the commandment to restore Jerusalem to the coming of the anointed one, the prince, the time will be seven and three score and two weeks. A riddle, mystical numbers. Who can interpret them? I, and the three magi from Babylon, whose reputations you all know very well. Gaspar, Belchior, and Balthasar. Well-known fanatics. Brothers, listen to me. We have studied the scrolls. We have deciphered the tablets. We have pondered the prophecies. Until now, the meaning is clear to us. The time of the coming of the Son of God lies within this year. Is not one of you stirred by this great challenge? In what way? Join me in my pilgrimage to find the king. And lay your gifts, too, at his feet. When the star appears in the sky, we have ten days to join our brother Magi in Babylon. No, I'm afraid such hard travel is too much for my advanced years. Good night, Artaban. Wait up, Garris. I'll go with you. I'm certainly not going to follow Artaban's shadows. You're young, Abdus. Are you not stirred by the adventure of setting out to find our Lord? It might be better not to find him, Artaban. A messiah in a far-off place, it could upset the world we know. A very comfortable world, I might remind you. Good night. Coward! Fool! Oh, I Sunk in complacency! Settle my swiftest stallion. Now? Tonight? Make haste. I've no time to lose. Artaban had ten days to join the other magi. Tirelessly he rode across the flat plains and over the brown slopes of Mount Arantes. Finally, on the tenth night, within a few hours' ride at the appointed meeting place, Artaban approached a grove of olive trees beside running water.
Can you hear me? Are you in pain? Who are you? Only God cares who I am. What are you doing here alone? Where is your family, your tribe? God, they took a sick goat and left a sick old man to die. Goodbye, you and your fine clothes and charitable questions. You know better than the rest of them. Who cares about a worn out old man who's given his whole life to... Here. Go away. If I drink, I merely live to die tomorrow. Come on, old man. I'm in a hurry. Well, then, hurry on. I did not ask for your time or your charity. On your feet, old man. I have food in my saddlebags. We must be on our way. I still can't understand why you are meddling with my fate. Who are you? Traveler, on my way to Jerusalem. To find the one born to be king of the Jews. You'll not find him in Jerusalem. speaks for your tribe. He is the one, the son of my son who is dead. I found the old man at the oasis. He tells me that you left him there to die. We are nomads and our way is hard. The old man's days are numbered. You have no right to throw him away like a worn out sandal. No doubt he's troublesome and tests your patience, but he's a human being. You owe him human loyalty. Is it human to keep that bag of bones alive and let a child of our tribe go hungry? No, my fine friend with the full belly. You have saved his life, therefore he is yours. Take him with you. That's impossible. I have far to go. Ah, huh? the sandal is on the other foot now and the strap pinches. enough to keep your grandfather and a whole tribe of children. You have saved my life. You have restored my faith, my dignity, and I have nothing to offer in return. Give me your blessing. Oh. I must make haste. May the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Bless you and prosper your journey. But did you not say you were going to Jerusalem to seek the Messiah? Yes, and I'm late already. But our prophets say that he is to be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem! Not Jerusalem! Bethlehem! And now, finally, Artaban approached the Temple of the Seven Spheres, where he was to join the other wise men. past the appointed hour and can delay no longer. We go to find the king. Follow us across the desert. Bethlehem! Not Jerusalem! Bethlehem! On the third day, after the three wise men had found Mary and Joseph with the young child Jesus, Artaban reached Bethlehem, bearing still his ruby and his pearl to offer to the king.
forgive the intrusion. All the streets were deserted. I'm searching for a babe, born to be king of Israel. You also? Others have come to Bethlehem? Three days ago. Magi from the Far East. They said a star guided them to the stable where the wife of Joseph of Nazareth lay with her newborn babe. Then they found him. They paid the child homage as if he were a prince and gave him many rich gifts. We could not understand it. Where are they now, the Magi? Gone. They disappeared that same night. But the babe they worship, he's still in Bethlehem? No. The man of Nazareth took the babe and his wife and fled. Some say to Egypt. Fled? Why? There is a rumor Herod's soldiers are searching for the infant. Everyone is frightened. So that's why the streets are empty. The men have driven the flocks up into the hills where they'll be safe if the soldiers come to plunder. Thank you for your kindness. I must resume my journey to Egypt or wherever the newborn king may be. Rachel! Rachel, the soldiers! Herod soldiers are killing all our children! Nothing. I'm alone here. You say you are uh, alone? Except for a mother cat and her kittens. Stand aside. No, wait. Who are you to defy Herod? What have you there? A ruby. Worth a fortune. To a captain that's hard of hearing. It's worthy of a king. Move on. There is no child here. Nothing but a cat. Have mercy upon me. I have spent for man what was meant for thy son. And now, with no star or prophecy to guide him, the other wise man set out for Egypt, seeking, searching, asking for word of the Holy Family. You are of the race of the Magi, yet you look for a Messiah. I had always heard that the Magi were men of great wisdom. Now I wonder. There are so many who claim to be the true Messiah. What is one to believe? And so Artaban continued a fruitless search for his Messiah for 21 years. Then one day, tired and troubled, he entered the dwelling of a Hebrew rabbi. What brings you to an obscure teacher of my faith? I'm searching for the Messiah. Ah. Your own prophets have foretold his coming, and I have seen it in the stars. I've sacrificed all my worldly possessions in 21 years of my life in a vain search to find the king. And if you find him? I will lay my presence, my one remaining gift at his feet. I will have found the flame that lights the skies and have given purpose and meaning to my life. I observe that you call the one you're looking for both a king and a messiah. Can he be both? The one I seek will be all-powerful. He'll bring a new kingdom to earth. That could mean that he's an emperor. But you do not look for him among the mighty. Why? Because... It, it's, it's confusing. I've 
searched so long, have grown old. And there are so many contradictions. How can he be an emperor? He was born in a stable, and his people are humble laborers. It does not fit together. Perhaps your messiah's kingdom is of a different kind. I do not understand you. Has it occurred to you that your king might not be found in a palace? If I were to look for such a one, I would seek among the poor and the lowly, the suffering and the oppressed, who need him most. How should I recognize so simple a man as that? Go home, my friend. You look for your Messiah in the wrong places. His kingdom is within. Prepare your heart and he will come to you, wherever you may be. No, I shall not give up my search. I will not return home to accept failure. And you are driven by pride, sir, not by reverence for the truth. How dare you? Who are you to advise me, a scrivener, locked away in a narrow room? It is written that he is a king, and I will find him on his throne. To lay this at his feet. I've lost everything else along the way, but I still have my pearl to pay him tribute. More years passed, and the fourth wise man was at the end of his resources. He was forced to work, reaping the harvests of land and sea, or toiling in the villages, wherever the strength of his aging arms could bring him food and sustenance. You shouldn't be here, Elias. You should be at your wife's side. No pay it. This work is finished. And I need the money for her and the infant. Nevertheless, a husband's place should be by his wife and a child. What use could I be? You hold her hand and tell her that you're proud. Your first? My first. I envy you. One more than I ever had. You know family to care for you in your old age? None that would concern themselves with a foolish, silly old man. You do not seem that to me. I've spent my whole life trying to prove that I was right. And about what? I've pursued dreams and shadows. But the object of my search has always eluded me. Until now, I can hardly remember what it was about. Elias! Go home, Elias. I'll finish your work and I'll bring you pay tonight. Do you mean that? Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you are kind, old man. And gentle. There's not this way in this cruel times. Unless... Are you by chance one of us? Us? A follower of the Messiah who preaches do unto others as you would have them do unto you. A simple credo. Hard to worthy of the Messiah. But in its very simplicity is the power that makes Jesus of Nazareth the King of Kings. Nazareth. Now where have I... He is the Son. The Son of God. I know, I have seen him. You have seen the King? The first time when I was only a lad. I had gone up into the mountains and I came upon a great multitude who were listening to him preach. When it came time for the noonday meal, there was, among all of us, only five small loaves of barley and two fishes. I don't know how it happened, but Jesus took the loaves and the fishes and gave thanks. And suddenly, there was more than enough to feed the multitude. A miracle. One of but many. He has turned water into wine. He has cured the sick, caused the blind to see and the deaf to hear. And he has raised the dead. Where is he? If I knew, which I do not, I would not dare to tell. For the Romans are afraid of the power of his goodness. Jesus of Nazareth. What is that? The last hope of an old man's life. Elias! I'm going to be with the mother of your child. Now that Artaban knew the name of the king, he renewed the search. But wherever he went, Jesus had been there and gone. And so at last, worn and weary and with little hope, Artaban finally came to the city of Jerusalem. (laughs) 
you should watch where you're going, old man. Everyone seems in such a hurry. Why? Well, haven't you heard about the crucifixion at Golgotha outside the city walls? They go to see men put to death? Oh, it is just some loon who says he can change water into wine. He is to be crucified between two thieves. What is his name? He calls himself Jesus of Nazareth. The Messiah? The King? He is to be crucified? Well, he told Pilate that he was the Son of God and King of the Jews. Nobody tells Pilate things like that. Could it be that this is what is intended? That I should find the King of Kings at last in the hands of his enemies and be able to offer up my pearl as a ransom? I'm coming, my Messiah. Pray God I'm not too late. done that you torment her. They are going to sell me as a slave. Is this true? She has been seized for her father's debts. It is the law of the land. And what of the law of God? Does that not take precedence? A human being is not a chattel. You speak like my father. He was so dear to me, he used to call me his tool. Bring her along. Oh, wait, wait. It seems a pearl of great price. If you could see your way to give it in settlement of the debt. See my way. I lost my way in a grove near Babylon, and then again in a cottage in Bethlehem. I do not willingly drag a young girl to be sold into slavery. I once owned slaves, and I saw not their suffering. Now the suffering of others has made me a slave. I cannot pass on. Forgive me, my son. You would do this for me. Take this. Pay her debts. That was the last of my treasures that I kept for my king. Now I failed utterly. I do not even know your name, yet I owe you so much. Listen. Listen. You need help. I must fetch someone. Do you not hear his voice? I hear nothing. You need rest and quiet. Not so, my lord. When saw I thee hungry, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink, or naked, and clothed thee? Three and thirty years have I looked for thee, but I have never seen thy face, nor ministered unto thee, my king. Verily I say unto thee, inasmuch as thou hast done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, Thou hast done it unto me. Artaban's journey was ended. His treasures were accepted. The other wise man had found his king. Beautiful. It surely is. Wonderful story for us all to share on Christmas. You know, Nancy, and Patty, and Ronnie, I've been thinking of how this earth of ours has made many a turn since the time of Artaban. Generation has followed generation, 
Nation has given way to nation. The ways of men have changed. We speak new languages, eat new foods, and wear new clothes. Yet the story of the other wise man is ever new. For each of us is really an artiban. True, we have our jobs to do. We marry and raise families. But like Artaban, we're seeking each in his own way to find the shadow of the Prince of Peace. We don't travel from the land of Persia to the ends of the earth as Artaban did. Ours is a personal quest. We mark our progress in milestones of wisdom, in new insights and understandings. Frequently, we come to forks in the road. Sometimes we choose the wrong way. Often we become discouraged and disheartened. But every Christmas is a fresh reminder that we can find peace on earth and goodwill among men. Our New Year's Eve presentation next week will be a delightful comedy called A Friendly Tribe, which will star one of your favorites, George Goebel. George plays a wacky and wonderful extrovert who involves his entire family in schemes which always seem to backfire. Be sure to join us next week. Our program is brought to you by General Electric, where progress is our most important product. Oh.